Thank you very much. The transition has phases. And the phase that most people want completed is the appointment of cabinet ministers. The first phase of appointments dealt with the fundamental basis of forming the coalition, which arose as a collaboration of political parties and one independent political aspirant consequently requiring the president to consider the nominations from those parties and stakeholders. The second phase deals with these ministries. The Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, Ministry of Information and Communication Infrastructure, Ministry of Petroleum and Energy, Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology, Ministry for Basic Education, Basic and Secondary Education, and Ministry of Transportation, Works and Infrastructure. The Ministry of Petroleum and Energy are separated under the estimates. But it is the desire of the President to put them together. He has been engaged in consultation and would have caused the swearing in of these ministers by this week. And the reason why this press conference is being held is to ensure transparency in the vetting process he's engaging. As of now, he has come to almost conclusion regarding the person to be appointed for the Ministry of Information and Communication uh, Infrastructure, the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education, and the Ministry of Transport, Works and Infrastructure. He is still working on the other ministries. The reason being very simple. Section 72 of the Constitution instructs that he entrusts the responsibility of ministries to persons with professional, the requisite professional qualifications and experience. So many advices are coming from different quarters. People are sending their curriculum vitae. So in short, he still would want to take time to do the vetting properly so that ultimately when the names come out, that people will believe that he has done what he was supposed to do. It is also important for people to understand that under Section 76 of the Constitution, executive power is vested in the President. Ministers 
uh, advisors of the president. And they are collectively responsible for the advice they give to the president, to the president as well as responsible for that advice as far as the National Assembly is concerned. The president also has desire to appoint people as special advisors to the president. He is also working on that mandate so that he will be able to capture the whole gamut of experience and professionalism that is required to be able to run a government in an efficient and effective manner. The President has also expressed concern on the accident which occurred in Kitty. It has a potential for creating social strife. That is why he mandated me to go to the hospital to do fact-finding. Eventually, we have received reports from the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital on the 7th of February and a police report from the 8th. The nature of the accident is understood. The persons involved are currently being treated or have been released from the hospital. But all in all, they combined to be 30 people. And initially, he has committed the government to provide $5,000 to each of the victims so that it will meet their hospital expenses and other expenses as families move up and down to try to take care of their loved ones. Investigation is ongoing and the person involved who actually was driving the vehicle is from Nyomi, and the family took $11,000 to the hospital, they are out to the hospital, as contribution to the treatment of the victims. So in essence, the National Reconciliation Committee of the Coalition has been sent to Kitty Village to speak to the families so that people will truly understand the cause of the accident and prevent any misunderstanding that may bring about uh, civil strife of any sort. The President also has mentioned the desire to begin electoral reform before the National Assembly election. He has instructed for consultation to begin with the political parties, the inter-party committee, with this attorney general and minister of justice, so that of 20th July 2015, which under section 43 increase the deficit for presidential aspirants from 10,000 to 500,000, National Assembly aspirants from 5,000 to 50,000, aspirants for cancelled elections from, of the, uh, in terms of mails, from 2,500 to 50,000, and for councillors from 1,200 to 10,000. Such uh, a draconian provision uh, would ultimately 
be subjected to a review by all stakeholders and a bill prepared, submitted to the National Assembly for enactment. So in short, the government is now working very hard to put the institutions to work so that the vacuum that has been created by the impasse will be overcome and all those who wish to contribute to national development will be able to play their part. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Alexander. We now move to the questions and answers section. We now invite questions from members of the press. of work is taking place in terms of vetting and consultation and he felt obliged to update so that consultation is taking place for filling the rest of the post. But in terms of that other dimension, I'm sure he'll be in a better position to address that. 